Welcome to Sethcraft. I'm building a 20 by 30 shop and it's time to put the interior walls in place. I'm going to have one going this way, which is a full 20 foot wall with a single door in it. And then I'm going to have one going this way to separate two different rooms. And that one's going to be roughly 176 inches long. So let's go ahead and get started putting these walls in place. The first thing that I want to do is mark out 116 and a half inches from the edge of this wall over here. Now that's going to be the midpoint of the building because there is a three and a half inch two by four over there. So I'm going to get this laid out here, find 116 and a half and put a mark there. And I'm going to do that a few times along this stretch to make sure that I have the placement of where this wall is going to go. Now that I have a location of where this wall is going to go, I'm going to set two two by fours down. And I want to make sure that the crown is facing up, and that's the natural bow of the board. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to mark out my stud placement on here, keeping in mind I'm going to have a door on this far end over here. Using a tape measure, a speed square, and a pencil, I'm going to mark out the stud placement on my wall. So place the tape measure here on the boards. Now on the very end, I've got an inch and a half for the first stud. And then I'm going to move over to 16 inch. I'm going to back off three quarters of an inch on both sides. And that's where my first stud's going to be. A queen stud here and a king stud here for my uh, doors. So from 52 and three quarters, I'm going to move over an inch and a half. And that's going to be my other queen stud. And then I'm going to move over another inch and a half. And that's going to be my king stud. And then from here on out, I can continue down the line using my 16 inch on center. Now using my speed square, I can line up those marks that were made and transfer them to the next board over. Now that I have the header and footer boards both marked out, I can separate these for the wall to go in between. Now my ceiling here is right at 10 foot. Uh, so I need to actually reduce the ceiling by, or this wall by three inches for the inch and a half down there, inch and a half up here. But also I need to shrink this 10 foot board down about a quarter inch or so. That way it will be able to fit up into the ceiling without having to uh, hammer it in. If I were to take a 10 foot board and sand it directly up under my trusses here, you can see that right before it hits uh, fully up there, it uh, snags. So I need to drop my wall down to let's say nine foot, 11 and a half inches, or somewhere around nine foot, 11 and three quarter inch. That way it will uh, be able to slide up in here and not hit these uh, trusses up here. I've got a 10 foot two by four to use as my stud. And if I want this to be a quarter inch from 10 foot, I've got to subtract the three inches for the two top plates and then a quarter inch. And that puts us at 116 and three quarter inches. I added a scrap board to the end of this to make sure that I can swing this into position and it won't hit a rafter or a, a truss anywhere. So that one, sneaks by with, honestly, it's that quarter inch I cut off. Let's move over here. That one has just a little squeak to it. Yeah, there's in here. This touches slightly, but I can push past it with just a knot there. That one's barely squeaking, so it looks like that quarter inch off of this two by four was the answer to this uh, height here. So, all right. Now, I also just remembered that I want to have this with a double top plate. Uh oh, hold on. All right, that's close enough. I can tap that with the hammer at that level right there. Yeah, same with that one. Okay, cool. So, that's going to be our value. Now, I want to have a double top plate on here. So, let me cut down another inch and a half off of these boards and we will begin putting this wall together.
Now my door height is going to be 80 inches, which means I need 78 and a half inches because the bottom plate will take up an inch and a half. So that's going to be a queen stud that goes along here up to the 80 inch mark. And then I'll have a header up here that goes on top of another queen stud. So let's cut two boards at 78 and a half. I'm going to get these two queen studs placed into position here. One on that side and one on this side. For the header, I'm going to use two by fours together, which is going to be at 39 inch to go up here on top. So I need two of them at 39. I'm also going to be sandwiching some OSB between those two. And so I need to cut that at the uh, 39 inch as well. All right, for the header, I need two two by fours at 39 inch. This is actually coming off of those uh, queen studs. So I get to use the majority of this wood here. All right, and then I also need a piece of this OSB. I found a piece that has already been ripped down, so it should fit in between my uh, two by fours pretty good. So let's do 38 inches on that. Not quite as much. In order to build this header, I'm gonna take this half inch OSB, place it in between here just like this, giving a little extra room on both the sides. And then I'm gonna take this 39 inch two by four on the top, make sure those are flush with one another on all sides. And I'm just gonna take some screws and put this together. I am angling them just a little bit so they don't pop out the other side. All right, we got the header put between here. I have a couple of Jake studs here on the side and I need to have uh, at least two here in the middle to finish this up. The three boards up here wound up being 33 and a quarter inch. So I want to uh, take my tape measure real quick and measure out uh, 16 inch on center from here. Now it's time to get everything together. I'm gonna to be using some three and a half inch screws to get this instead of nails since I don't have a nail gun. So let's go ahead and begin getting everything hooked together. All the studs are now attached to the top and bottom plate. I'm gonna go through here on the side of the door and make sure I have some of these screws going in this way. I'm also gonna make sure that I go into the header to keep that in position as well. The next step is to install some blocking and that's gonna be boards that go from this side to this side. Anytime you have a wall over eight foot, you're supposed to have fire blocking in here. So right here, I'm gonna mark out where the eight foot mark is, which is right here. And the reason I'm only doing eight foot is because my neighbor has some plywood that he is uh, gonna be able to sell me. So I'm gonna be doing plywood walls instead of sheetrock, which will make this building very heavy, but also I can mount anything to the walls because it will be uh, so strong compared to sheetrock. So looking forward to that, but I'll be hanging eight foot pieces of that uh, plywood here all the way from the uh, ground up to the eight foot mark. All right, so to install the blocking, I just need to figure out my distance here. And this is going to be 13 and 5 eighths. Okay, I'm going to set my board right in here and I can go either right below or right above this and I'm going to stagger my board, so. Okay, I'm going to continue on the line until I have the rest of these done. All right, that's what the blocking looks like here on this wall. My next step is to build an 80 inch wall over here and they will be connected together through the middle, but also I'm going to have a top plate on here which will connect across there as well. So it's gonna be very similar to the way I built this wall, except I will not have the door in there. So I'm gonna build that real quick and we will stand this first wall up into position.
There we go. I just got the second half of this wall built. I'm going to scoot these together here and then screw them together so that they are nice and tight. And then we will put a top plate up there. So I have a board that spans from this side all the way over into this side. And then a smaller piece will connect those together up top and it will be ready to put into position. Okay, up here on the top, I'm gonna to place a 10 footer and that should bridge those two pieces quite nicely. Very good. I'll put a few screws in that to hold it in place. Of course, these are non load bearing walls. And then I'll have to figure out what the piece down there needs to be. All right, time to stand this wall up. I've got some screws I'm gonna go ahead and put in here real quick so that I can lock this down once it's upright. I don't need anything too long because the plywood under here is only three quarter inch. I'm just gonna put a few of these in. I can come back later and put more. Now there's a few places in here where I can make contact with one of the joists up underneath and that will help lock this down a lot better. I've also got a sledgehammer standing by in case I have to knock this wall around a little bit. Okay, if I'm able to lift this up, I'm gonna get the top of it in the general location of where it's supposed to go, and then I can use the sledgehammer on the bottom to kick it into place. Let's see if I'm able to pick this wall up or if I have to wait until I have somebody here to help me. I'm not used to picking up 176 inch long Walls, I'm used to doing 10 footers, so. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, yeah, that's heavy. It just barely snugs that trusses up there. All right, I think it's gonna stay long enough, hopefully, for me to get the ladder up here. Well, this wall took a lot more coaxing than I was anticipating to get into position, but I've now got it matched up on the line and I'm just putting these uh, screws down. Now I can use the level and tap the top into position. All right, I've got my level against this board and I can see that I need to come out in this direction a little bit. So let's go up top and do that. I like it. I'm gonna put a couple screws in up here on this truss and then I move down to the next portion of the wall and get that leveled out. finish this wall without you. It's just like the first one that was built with the door in it. Get this up in position here. Now I'm not going to put the top plate on there until I have the next wall in place and then I'll have to add some blocking up top to get this attached to the ceiling. So but for now I'm just going to Get this into position and attach it to the walls, the side walls and the floor. putting a double top plate up here to help lock these two walls together. So I've got a 12 foot board I'm going to bring up here real quick. The last thing I want to do to get this wall complete is to put one support up here at the top between the trusses. So what I'm going to do is measure out here 
right at 46 inches. And the reason for that is that it will be a good length for my insulation to, uh, to meet up in here. All right, now I'm gonna span across here and see that this board needs to be 22 and 3 eighths. All right, this board is gonna go between the trusses and it's gonna go on top of the wall that was just made. Then I'm going to use a little longer screw to go into that board to lock it down into the double top plate. That cross support right there will make sure the wall stays in place left to right. I did not put one over here because the other wall is connecting and it should be more than strong enough to keep that going. It'll also make it easier for me to insulate not having lots of those boards going across. And the studio walls are done. So this room that I'm standing in currently will be an office space. If I were to step into this direction here, it's going to be laser engraving and potentially 3D printing in the future. Uh, so this is gonna be a room that will have vents going outside. And stepping back through the office is where we have this other door, which then enters into the woodworking side over here and then over here will be electronics testing. Now I do still have to build a utility room over here that will house batteries and other solar equipment plus uh, inverters to run this place. And uh, I think it's gonna be pretty nice having these dividing walls in here. Thank you so much for watching this video on building a 20 by 30 shop, installing the walls inside. If you want to check out more videos that I have on this build, then I'll have a link down below. And make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on so you can see all the updates that are occurring here in this 20 by 30 studio. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Workshop, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.